Secretary General, ministers, ambassadors, dear friends, a really heartful, warm welcome to Oslo and the government office complex. As you see, this is work in progress right now. On the afternoon of 22nd of July 2011, a man parked a car full of explosives on the other side of the fence here. He then walked away, got into another car, and drove toward Utøya Islands north of Oslo about 40 minutes ride. As he was on his way, the bomb went off, killing eight people in the building, injuring dozens more, and destroying buildings and the neighborhood. Once he got to the island, he walked around, and in about one hour, he shot and killed 69 participants, mainly children, youth, participants at the AUF Norwegian Labour Party Youth Summer Camp, of which Astrid is today the chairperson, and she was on the island as a participant back then. Many hundreds tried to hide, run, or swim for their lives. As a foreign minister back then, I had the day before visited the camp and we had discussed international politics, we had played football, we had had a real youth camp atmosphere. And the next day, darkness descended on the island, on my country, and I would say also on Europe. The attack on the 22nd of July was a deliberate and well-planned and executed project by one person. The extreme right-wing terrorist was alone in executing it. But as we see it now, he did not develop these intentions in isolation. He was inspired by ideas that he found on the net in communication over some time. We may say he was a lone wolf, but he was a member of a pack. His prime target was the Norwegian Labour Party, Prime Minister Stoltenberg and my party, and above all, its youth. And beyond that, democracy, our institutions, the very heart of government right here. It was a politically motivated attack on the political movement and on democracy in Norway. At Utøya, his project was to disseminate the next generation of politicians. And I can tell as Labour Party leader that we are missing a huge number of people who would have been perhaps in government or at service of democracy today and who are no longer with us. Today, I'm proud to say that two of the ministers in my party, they are both deputy leaders of my party recently elected at the convention, are survivors from Utøya, and they are living proof that they won and he lost. And I am proud of my democracy that I can say the following. I am proud, and I know that all other parties in opposition or in position are proud that there are many candidates at the local elections this fall who are survivors from my party from back then. Their experience have given us and them resilience and hope. Twelve years on, we all feel the anguish, the emptiness, the anger and the horror. We think of those left behind, the families, the empty chairs in classrooms, around dinner tables, and all those who live with grief and loss. We think of the hundreds of survivors and all the circles around them who bear visible and invisible wounds. The three firefighters standing here alongside me were guards and among the first who came to the scene that day, saving lives, overcoming their fear that the buildings could collapse remarkable courage at that time. I myself had worked nine years as civil servant in this building. I have gone in and out as a minister for many years. And the uh, Secretary General had his office on top of the building. So we all feel a direct link to that very institution. Outside Norway, you felt shock and disbelief, and I would like to thank through you all the messages we got during those days. And I can remember especially from colleagues who say that we can feel your pain, meaning that you, many of you, have experienced something in the same 
order of magnitude. It's a sad fact that every year NATO member states are targets of terrorist attacks, including mass shootings. So we express solidarity with all families. Norway was not prepared for an attack like this. We were not able to foresee it, nor to stop it. That is in itself terribly painful. I can tell you, still is. However, we were able to unite as a large community in my country to confront our disbelief, sorrow and anger, and we could do so together across party lines. We stood behind our Prime Minister, Jens Stoltenberg, who then called for more openness, more democracy, resolve and strength. So this was a rallying call and we stood behind it. We rallied our collective power as an open, inclusive democracy built on trust, never willing to sacrifice that key currency in our country. We would not allow a terrorist to weaken or stop us, and of that I am actually proud. In a few years, we will be using our new desks at the government office building. And ministries will come to this complex, and it will be a new phase of modern Oslo. A nation, remembers, and learning center is under development, will be right where the bomb exploded. But what is most significant is that at Utøya, the island which was attacked, and an island that was lying in darkness for a couple of years, AUF is back taken the island back, rebuilding buildings, modernizing it, and the summer camps are attended by more people, more activity, more hope, more hope for the future than ever before. There is a center built for commemoration, learning, and engagement, receiving school classes from all over Norway and actually beyond Norway. And that house was ranked by The Guardian in 2016 as one of the 10 most important buildings in the world that year because it's an architectural, uh, very interesting construction. Very different from what the terrorists had planned. It's a place to come together and reflect and be inspired. So young people have turned this island into a living proof that we must never take values for such as tolerance, equality and diversity for granted. And many of you know this lesson all too well. The 22nd of July was a politically motivated attack but democracy and the youth and the will and the determination prevailed. So briefly, as you are about to start your important meeting, what can we learn? What elements of lessons are there 12 years on? Let me just offer a few reflections. First, we must, as a community of democracies, strengthen our efforts against hate speech, racism and violent extremism. We must, as individuals, in our daily walking around on the pavements as politicians, as ambassadors, as political parties, stand up to intolerance and hatred. Look people in the eyes and say we don't want to have any of it. Each and every one of us in our communities, along with the judiciary, the storting, the government, our parliament, we must unite around this. But I think one important message is to tell every man and woman, young and old, that you have an individual responsibility to bear. Second, we have to strengthen our emergency preparedness and response. We have worked systematically on that. We are now better equipped to deal with terrorism and the threats, but we can never be 100%. Third, we also know that we will never be able to claim that we have finished the job. That is dangerous. Last June, on the eve of the Pride Parade and Festival here in Oslo, a man shot and killed two people and injured many more. So we are not beyond this. Finally, we know that no amount of new equipment, police, intelligence, will ever be enough to protect us from all threats. That would be naive. So, dear friends, I believe I would finish with these words. The most important safeguards are to be found within each and one of us, individually and as communities. Our resistance, individually, collectively, to intolerance, hatred, extremism, and our support for equality, diversity, and human rights start in our minds, start in our hearts, our best tools for protecting and promoting an open democratic society. So dear friends, as you unite here in this fine political military alliance, we must stand up to hatred, we must defend our values, our most effective weapon, in fact, in our fight for dignity, security, 
and freedom. And this is also, I believe, the essence of our alliance. We come together to discuss strategy and means of building an effective political and military alliance. And we can thus together protect and defend these shared values that lie at the core of everything we do. So in the memory of the 77 people who were killed on 22nd of July 2011, I thank you for being here and I thank you for your solidarity and attention. Thank you. Prime Minister, Der Astri, Der Lisbeth, Ministers, Ambassadors, Der Friends. Every day of every month of every year, we remember. We remember the day we were attacked. Here, where I had my office, at the government quarter in Oslo. The heart of our democracy men and women working at the service of this country and its people. And on the island of Utah, where young people gathered at the Labour Party summer camp. The future of democracy attacked for their political beliefs. 77 lives lost, hundreds injured, an entire nation devastated. But I also remember how all Norwegians came together in the wake of the attacks. And our friends and allies around the world stood with us in grief. Despite the shock and the pain, Norway was determined not to let hatred of a single man win over love of an entire nation. And indeed, love prevailed. Our democratic values prevailed. Terrorism failed. Terrorism comes in many guises. The perpetrators use different political ideologies and religious beliefs to justify what they do. But in reality, they are all the same criminals using violence to achieve their goals. As we have seen from New York to Christchurch and from Istanbul to Paris. There is a line between Utøya and Ukraine, between a brutal act of terrorism and an illegal war of aggression. The values attacked then are the ones attacked now. Democracy, freedom, diversity of thought, of opinion, of belief. And the intention is the same, to kill for political ends, spread fear and sow the vision. It did not work then, it does not work now, it never will because we will not let authoritarian states break down the rules-based international order. We will support Ukraine for as long as it takes. And we will not let terrorists crush our free and open societies. We will stand united to protect our values and our people. Gathered here today at this memorial, we look back, we remember, and we honor the victims and the survivors. But let us also look forward and learn that with hope, solidarity, and love, we can preserve peace, defend democracy, and protect freedom. Thank you.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in a world where we see too many democracies under pressure, more extremism, many forms of radicalization, and more hate speech, a war in Ukraine, killing and wounding innocent people, it is important that you, all of you are here today. As the leader of the Norwegian support group, I want to point out the importance of groups and organizations of victims of terrorism. We have become involuntary experts with knowledge and competence we never really wanted. At the same time, it is important that you, in all your countries, listen to victims' organizations like the one I represent. The power of connections between victims across borders are essential for us and for the fight against terrorism and radicalization. I call on you to include us into your dialogues and listen to perspectives we and voluntary have, but voluntary want to share with you. Those wounded and us left behind have experienced that it takes time to make systems that actually assist those affected by terror attacks. In Norway, we have a good dialogue and a political leadership willing to listen. But almost 12 years later, there are still issues to be dealt with. With this perspective, we share both our continued challenges as well as our successes. In a democracy, we have room for those discussions and for that critical thinking. We will keep working because we have made a promise. Never be silent, never forget. Thank you.